social media. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with the 62nd episode of some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. That's the spinoff from New World Next Week, where we want to look at some positive things. It's not all screaming and yelling and bad news and bringing everything down. There are ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. You got to see a little bit of Frankie at the beginning of this episode. She's not a big fan of me run of my mouth. So she's going to take off and we're going to look at some of the ways that we are winning in solutions oriented stories. And the worm has turned. We should make a note is an expression that even a worm will turn is an expression used to convey the message that even the meekest or most docile of creatures will retaliate or get revenge if pushed too far. It sources back to a John Haywood collection of Proverbs all the way back to 1546. And that's how we begin with our first story, a little bit of schadenfreude on this good news next week. The number of people using Facebook daily in North America dropped for the first time. Facebook reported 184 million daily average users in quarter four of 2017. That's down from 185 million in quarter three. So that's a million people walking away. It is the first such drop since Facebook began reporting these numbers in its earnings report. It suggests that Facebook's most lucrative market has become saturated in terms of usage, which means it'll have to add more ads or charge more for ads to keep growing, which as we all know is the end all be all goal of everything that you do. It has to be growth at all costs. You got to make those board members happy. That's pretty much why most of the companies and things that we initially like, unfortunately, sell out and go the way of the dodo or of the dinosaurs, as it may also be noted. So we shut down and deactivated our Facebook page a couple of years ago before America's Next Top President really heated up and we've never really missed it except for a couple of times maybe having to log in to find that old friend's number that you couldn't get a hold of any other way. But then as soon as that's done, completely deactivate it and shut it all down. I'm thankful that, you know, friends like Apollo Slater and Ray Vahi and folks have built something called BitChute slash Speak Out. They're kind of rebranding it, but it is a YouTube killer. It is a free speech oriented platform where you can upload videos, podcasts, what have you. I like to think that there are also people working on our own social medias. Yes, there's all the alternatives, Mastodon and Gab and Minds, and we are on all of those sources. Of course, it's tough to put everything on every post all the time. It kind of constantly keeps us running around instead of doing the work we should be doing and maybe also enjoying our lives. So hopefully people are enjoying more of their lives by not being on Facebook. And we get that story from our good buddy Gerder. He's on the tweets at G3RD3R. And he has been hanging out more with us in the chat as we are building community, not conspiracy. More on that at the end of this episode. Our second story... More good news from the Weed World Order. San Francisco will wipe out thousands of marijuana convictions. They will retroactively apply California's new marijuana legalization laws to prior convictions, expunging or reducing misdemeanor and felony convictions dating back to 1975. That's good. That would even be two years before I was born. And I've had my own marijuana arrest expunged from the Frederick County, Maryland records years ago. We can talk about that some other time. Nearly 5,000 felony marijuana convictions will be reviewed, recalled, and resentenced. And more than 3,000 misdemeanors that were sentenced prior to Proposition 64's passage will be dismissed and sealed. Again, the CBD toothpaste is out of the tube. Jeff Sessions can blah 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 all he wants, but the states are already getting high on that green, on that tax revenue. And just like we saw recently in Vermont, it doesn't always take some state-sponsored people push initiative Phony politicians are getting behind the weed push now. They just completely decriminalized in Vermont and fortunately did it in a way where they didn't create much like we've done top to bottom over here on the West Best Coast from Washington to here in Oregon to now down in California. The giant, of course, track and trace taxation scheme, which is what it's all about. The whole reason they prohibited something for generations and then get to flip a switch and exploit it all. And of course, all the gains will be occulted and all the losses will be, of course, nationalized and forced on to Sucker Public and John 12-Pack. That's why, again, we just sort of call for Johnny Hempel seeds. And again, I didn't invent that idea like a lot of things. I heard the idea and I liked it and I took it and I ran with it. And then I tried and spread that idea. 
like memes, like viruses, like seeds of weed that love to grow. Our third and final story this week on episode 62 of Good News Next Week reminds me of a story we covered almost two years ago, and that's essentially about how you compost or deal with garbage in your house, in your apartment, and we have been apartment living for quite some time. And I made an episode back in March of 2016. It was one of our earliest Good News Next Week episodes. Throw away your trash can. And indeed, we did get rid of our trash can here at home. It was a way to force us to think about what garbage you take into your house, which makes it that much harder to deal with getting rid of all that garbage. If you don't take the crap in, you don't have to deal with getting rid of it. Garbage in, garbage out. Choose your analogy. So essentially you start to think about the things that you're buying in the first place and what you can reduce and reuse and recycle. And again, it doesn't take some Agenda 21 push or some psychological propaganda to know that I'm not a wasteful person. And we live and exist in this sphere, on this Gaia. Call it whatever you want. It just makes sense. So I'm going to include an article that I learned about actually in a little newspaper called Green Living. And I'll include the links just like we include the links to everything we say and play. GreenLivingPDX.com, a practical journal for mindful living. It's a little newsprint magazine that came in our weekly organic local in-season food delivery, Organics to You. They included this issue of Green Living, and it had an article on apartment composting made easy, because that ain't easy, and it can get real stinky real fast. I'd never heard of something called the Bokashi method. It's a Japanese method of composting where it may actually require some worms, and they kind of yum, 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 munch down, but it doesn't make it stink, and it doesn't make it hot, and it doesn't make it possibly blow up if you're not constantly mixing that compost. Again, it's a fantastic way to to deal with the food that you're cooking. It's another fantastic, you know, all the millions of things I want to do in the Media Monarchy Kingdom. One of the numerous things is make a good Food World Order video about how we make weekly oatmeal parfaits on Sunday. Ten of them. So Cassie and I have breakfast each and every morning all through the rest of the week. Or looking at ways that we make broth. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's amazing how she does it. Save your food scraps, the good food scraps. There are some other food scraps that are kind of gross. I guess kale stems and some of those things are pretty bitter if you boil them and aren't good. You can kind of learn, and there's a little bit of trial and error, and of course you can always ask people questions. That's how you learn stuff. Save those things, put them in the freezer, save up a freezer bag, then put water on it, boil it, drain it, strain it, put it back in the freezer and you've got frozen broth and that's how we make a lot of our meals here at home. Again, there's no simple switch to turn everything off and I'm off the system and I'm awake. Doesn't work like that. It is a long process. I've been doing Media Monarchy for 12 plus years and I'm still figuring things out and still making mistakes and still trying to, as our friend Richard Grove says, trying to learn our way forwards. Now something else our friend Richard Grove of Tragedy and Hope did with Tragedy and Hope is build a community for like-minded people. And they're not out on the street bullhorning and buy a bunch of ads and being pretty much all the things we hate about commercial media just to try and get a bunch of eyes and a bunch of clicks. They have something classy, a private community. And that's more and more where I'm leaning and where I'm driving towards with Media Monarchy. If you'd like to join that community, MediaMonarchy.com slash support has the ways that you can get in and support our work via Patreon or PayPal or a post office box or Bitcoin or Monero or maker support. As I noted recently, one of my favorite bosses, the late great Rusty, he always said, you should make it as easy as possible for people to give you money. And that's what we try and do here. Some folks accused me when I went independent of e-begging. Now, of course, those same people would accuse me of being a horrible sellout if I stayed at the FM radio job that I hated. Well, I'm trying to make independent, non-commercial alternative media, and I'm doing it. So far, so good. Moving and grooving. Thanks to you, and a huge thanks to you. That's episode 62 of Good News Next Week. What are we calling this one? The worm has turned on social media. I appreciate you being here and supporting our work and listening and hanging out. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com, thanking you again so much for listening and reminding you, as always, like Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedy said, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, 
Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.